All right, hello. So here I'm uh, going to talk about uh, the Philips Hue light strips. So um, the Philips Hue um, light strip, it's a little Philips Hue accessory. Essentially, it goes with the uh, system. It uses um, Z-Wave. And um, they give you this uh, strip of LEDs here. Um, it's kind of typical. As you can see, these are the epoxy-coated. Uh, RGB LEDs, they run on 12 volts. Um, I think this is a, I think this is two meters. Yeah, they give you two meters of this. So anyways, um, what it is is uh, you get two meters of this light strip and a little box that it's connected to permanently, I might add, and a 12 volt power supply also permanently connected. Uh, you plug that in and then um, you pair it to your Philips Hue, uh, you know, Zigbee light system, and then you can control it with your phone apps, all sorts of different things. So I picked this up a while ago, but I wasn't really happy with the fact that um, the the this was the module it was in this box, which is empty now. And it was connected to these LEDs and a 12 volt power supply. And um, I took it apart thinking, I this is not enough. I want more LEDs than this. Um, and I didn't you know, really know how to hook it up. So I initially disconnected these LEDs, um, which is why, here we go. See, there's a, these are, I, I put a little, you know, these little pin connectors on here. And I did the same on this, the output. Well, this is the board right here, but I'll get to that in a second. And um, I tried to figure out how to drive more LEDs, like maybe using transistors. Um, I, you know, I, I was trying to see what I could do. Um, the the drive of course with which is typical with these strips is uh they have a common positive and then each of the rgb is negative so you ground the red and you get the red leds turning on so that's how that this was driving them which is very typical so i'm oh, sorry hold on a second so i tried to get one of these rgb amplifiers here well i have one here and um you know, these work in a, in a very typical way. The same thing comes in. You have, uh, oh, you know what, actually, wait, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's see here, I have a couple of them here. Okay, yeah, so here's here's one, this is how it comes. Well, it's obviously, the, this board is out, but the input is a positive here, and then you know these grounds. So it would be perfectly drivable from this, right? And the output is uh, the same what the LEDs want. And then, of course, there's 12 volts in. You plug power in. I mean, here's an example. Plug power in there. And you plug your LEDs in here and you drive it. Well, these are very common. They're very cheap. They're made in China. Um, but this didn't work. And uh, some troubleshooting later, I figured out why. Um, the input on these is opto-isolated from the 12 volts in the drive transistors, which is nice. I'm, I'm down with that. But the problem is, is <laughs> while the uh, MOSFETs that are in here are designed for PWM LEDs, driving LEDs with PWM, they used really crappy um, opto isolators and they have a very low frequency band pass. Well, the Philips Hue uh, drives these LEDs in the kilohertz range which you should be doing if you want to avoid flicker and any possible noise. So I think it's the drive frequency is like a 16 kilohertz or 20 kilohertz. Well, the, the uh, opto isolators in these can't handle that, that rate. What happens is if you try to drive it through this, you just get, um, I think like full on works, but as you start to dim, uh, there's such a slow response to the opto isolators that essentially they're they're full brightness all the time, and it does turn off if you shut it off. They they're off. The LEDs are off. But then when you do try to do dimming, you really get no dimming. You get basically off or full brightness. So that's crap. So screw that. So I tried to figure out how to make this work using, you know, I bought some PNP and NPN transistors and I was kind of chaining them together, trying to invert. It was just difficult. I couldn't get the frequency response I needed. I just, I got better performance than this, but I just couldn't really figure it out. So I decided to try something different. Well, here is the actual board. This is what's inside 
um, the Philips Hue light strip controller. So you have, there's the antenna, 2.4 gigahertz antenna, which is Zigbee. That's the microcontroller. Must be some kind of like Philips custom ASIC because it, it or, or you know, it's probably not. It's probably just a standard Zigbee kind of one. It's, it's a microcontroller that has Zigbee built in. So there's the antenna. Um, a little bit of power supply here because obviously this microcontroller runs on a much lower uh, voltage than 12, which is what goes into this. And um, and then basically over here you have the drive transistors, a little bit of some, you know, basically level shifting stuff here, and the drive transistors, and then that's the output. Well, I've uh, desoldered the output, obviously. I desoldered the input, and I put my own wire in here. And what I did is, flipping this over, there were some test points on the bottom. And a little poking around with my oscilloscope, I found that these test points here were the inputs to those uh, three drive transistors. So after all the level shifters and stuff, that was the direct um, inputs. So I just thought, why don't I just drive new MOSFETs, much higher capacity ones, Obviously, these tiny little ones here just don't have capacity to, uh, you know, run large amounts of LED. So why don't I just bypass them? Well, that's what this board is. It's a ugly as hell board, but and I'm just gonna glue this board, this thing down onto this. But there are three um, high power MOSFETs. Um, I have uh, some JWT connector soldered on. Here's a typical strip of, you know, these 5050 RGB LEDs. Uh, 12 volts comes in. Of course, I have a, a much higher capacity power supply. I have a three amp here. And uh, this, this is the power into this board. So this needs 12 volts to run the microcontroller. Of course, there's no more output, so whatever. And, uh, and the bottom is pretty ugly, but works. And there we go. So, this actually works. Oops, that's hot. I have to hot glue something. Okay, so let me plug in the power here. Actually, first let me turn these lights off here. Whoa, sorry. One more light here. You get to see my really messy bin. Oops. Look at that. I need to clean up a little bit here. All right, so here we go. We're going to plug in the power. There we go. So what happens is um, I have these off right now, uh, you know, with the, the Hue system. So this uh, board retains the memory of what you are last doing. So when you first plug it in and if they're off, they will just go through a little bit of a demo, like what you saw. And if uh, they are on, you just res resumes whatever you had it on before. So let's unplug this again. And plug it back in. So um, I'm pretty excited. I, I think... This is a great solution. Um, yeah, there we go. And um, the interesting thing is, I basically I was testing earlier, and I had the LEDs, uh, the the included strip, plugged directly into the board. You know, being driven by its MOSFETs, and the performance of the uh, dimmability seems to be equal on these. It's not great, I have to say. This the board as a whole just doesn't get that dim. You know, you have bright to dim. You just don't have, you have a pretty wide range, but you know, I would really like some much dimmer capabilities. But I guess the resolution of that microcontroller is not good enough or whatever, I don't, I don't know, you know, but um, anyhow, but it does work now and I can drive, this is a, you know, five meter strip. And uh, obviously these uh, these MOSFETs are pretty powerful, I can, if I have to put a little heat sink on each one of them, I can. And that will allow me to run them pretty high. But even though I was testing by running this, um, I mean, it, the MOSFETs have an easy time of it because they're they're basically on or off. They're not, they're doing PWM. So there's no analog here. So they don't really get driven that hard. I mean, maybe I would have been fine with more LEDs on this. I, I don't know, but I feel safer this way. This works. It's ugly right now, but I'm going to kind of clean this up and hot glue it down so it's all self-contained. And then um, we're going to, I'm going to install these up in the kitchen and I'm going to put these all around my, above the cabinets and stuff. So 
I'm excited. So you get to see. Uh, I'll show a result once I'm done. But this just shows if you have one of these light strips, um, you can do this, build a little board. It's very simple. Basically, uh, the outputs of this are just going to the gate of each of these MOSFETs. And, um, you know, they're just typical end channel. So there's really nothing to it. I didn't add any resistors because this board already has all the resistors and, and various uh, passives that are required to drive the transistors. So maybe it's not the best thing in the world to leave the other transistors connected while these, so they're both hooked up, but whatever. Anyways, it works. I'm excited. This has been sitting around in my bench forever down here and I want to get this installed and I finally can. All right, thanks for watching.